Hey guys, Dave with the First Place Auto Parts, and we're going to take a stroll down memory lane and have a look at the history of the Chevrolet Camaro. Now, the Chevrolet Camaro was quite honestly GM's desperate response to the popularity of its Ford Mustang in the 1964, and it started the Pony Car Wars. Over 54 years of production, there have been over 5.5 million Camaros produced over six various generations. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Camaro and the various generations. What makes them different and what makes them so special? So stay tuned and let's talk Camaro. Hey guys, if you like today's video, please consider subscribing to the First Place Auto Parts YouTube channel. We're gonna continually be adding new videos every week where we show you how to put new parts on. We take a look at the latest parts that are available and we go to some pretty cool car guy stuff. I'm pretty sure you're gonna to wanna to see. The introduction of the Mustang in April of 1964 caught virtually every car manufacturer except Ford off guard, and Chevrolet did not have a car to compete with a new Mustang in an emerging pony car market. The rear-engine Corvair could not compete, and the visually ho-hum Chevy 2 Nova lacked any kind of sex appeal, and it wasn't until the Mustang was a huge sales success in August of 1964 that the go-ahead was given to rush a comparable car into production. So this new GM car internally was known as XP or Experimental XP836 and the marketing department racked their brains for a really cool name to name this new pony car and they came up with, wait for it, they came up with the name Panther. Now look, the name Panther is about as cool as the name Vega, which isn't cool at all. Thankfully, GM stuck to its guns by calling the car, starting with the letter C as they had done in the past, such as with Corvette, Chevelle, Chevy 2 and the Corvair, and they called the car the Camaro. The first generation Camaro debuted in September of 1966 and was produced for the 1967 through the 1969 model years on a new GM rear wheel drive F body platform as either a two door coupe or a convertible. There were seven engines available in the first generation Camaro, ranging from everything from a 230 cubic inch V6 a 350 cubic inch small block, all the way up to the Big Daddy, the 396 cubic inch big block that really filled up the Camaro's engine bay. There were some subtle changes to the first generation Camaro body, such as the 1967 only vent windows, and also the addition of the side marker lights starting in 1968. The 67 and 69 Camaros are still to this day some of the most recognizable and desirable American muscle cars ever produced. The second generation of the Camaro hit the dealer floors in February of 1970 and was heavily restyled. It was produced all the way to 1981 with some mild tweaks to the body in 1974 and 1978. The Camaro, while it was really a good looking car in the second generation, look, it gained a little weight and it gained some size as well. The car was starting to morph into something that was a little more comfortable to drive, sometimes at the cost of the performance side of things but there's no doubt that the second generation Camaro was a sexy beast. Still based on the F-body platform, the second gen Camaro was similar to its predecessor, the first gen. It had a unibody structure, a front subframe that had A-arm front suspension, and leaf springs to control the solid rear axle. The 1980 and 81 Z28 models included an air induction hood scoop with an intake door that opened under full throttle. The RSSS package was dropped in 1972 and reintroduced later on in 1996. The second gen ran a long time and it was a cool car. It got a lot more comfortable to drive than the first gen, but quite honestly, the mid 70s to early 80s was a bad time for performance. Now the third generation Camaro, this is where we're starting to get some technology involved. This car was produced in the late 1981 as a 1982 model and production ran all the way through 1992. The car was the first time that Camaro was available with fuel injection and could be had with either a five-speed manual transmission or an automatic overdrive. And signs that GM was trying to get back into the performance gain, the third generation Camaro as it came out was 500 pounds lighter than the second generation. Horsepower started making a comeback when the IROC Z was introduced in 1985 and continued through 1990. Horsepower was once again on the mind of car buyers by 1987, and GM went obliged by making the L98 350 cubic inch 5.7 liter V8 engine a regular option on the IROC Z paired with an automatic transmission only. A major body style change also happened in 1987 as the convertible body style Epson since 1969 returned to celebrate the 20th anniversary edition of the Camaro. 
Okay guys, we're halfway through the six generations and we're looking at generation number four for the Camaro, which was produced from 1993 all the way through 2002. The fourth generation Camaro was drastically different than the third generation that preceded it in that its body was much more rounded. All those angular creased lines that showed up on the third gen were gone on the fourth gen. The fourth gen remains true though, however, to its first generation roots and that it was still offered as a coupe or a convertible, was still rear wheel of drive, and still had a V6 or a V8 that had pushrod motors in it. The big news for the fourth gen was that the now standard V8 power plant was the new 350 cubic inch LT1 engine, which was introduced in the Corvette in 1992. It was standard in the Z28. And go fast options included all speed traction control, new six speed T56 manual transmission, and high performance 16 inch Goodyear GSE tires. The fourth generation Camaro by 2002 had become a fairly powerful, good handling car, but it had also become very heavy and very large. Compared to its Dearborn competitor, Ford, the Mustang, the F body was a little cumbersome to drive in both the Camaro and his cousin, the, the Firebird variant of it. So in, for some unknown reason, in 2003, GM decided to kill the Camaro off. It was not to be had any longer as far as we knew. Look, sales has been in on a decline up until 2002. Now in 2002, sales went up, but it was well announced that the Camaro would not be any longer, and people went out and bought the car and drove. So. The last year for the fourth generation, which was 02, was also, as far as we knew it at the time, the last year for the Camaro. All that would change when the fifth gen came out, but up until that point, we didn't know if the Camaro was coming back. So after 2002, if you were a Camaro fan, things looked kind of bleak, and they continued to look bleak for eight years, up until the fifth generation arrived in 2010. Manufactured from 2010 through 2016, the fifth generation Camaro had an all new body and also new underpinnings. The body harkened back to the first generation Camaro. However, the chassis was very unique in that it had an independent rear suspension. It was based on the GM Zeta platform, which was being used by General Motors globally. It was a lot, what was underneath a lot of the Cadillacs. It had a fantastic ride, and as importantly, it put all its new horsepower down to the ground. 5th Gen Camaro LS and LT models were powered by a 3.6 liter V6 that produced 312 horsepower, where the 2011 models were made into either a 6-speed manual or a 6-speed automatic. Early 5th Gen SS Camaros were powered by a 6.2 liter LS3 V8 producing 426 horsepower with a 6-speed manual and the 2016 Camaro SS having the potent 505 horsepower LS7 nestled between the front fenders. Clearly, horsepower and performance is back front and center for the Camaro brand in the 5th generation. And then on May 16th, 2015, GM unleashed the 6th generation Camaro, which is the latest generation that we know of today. GM was about to celebrate not only the car itself, but also the name Camaro and its 50th anniversary. The 6th generation Camaro sales began in late 2015 and offered in the LT and SS models built on GM's new Alpha platform, which is currently used by the Cadillac ATS. The 2016 Camaro weighs 200 pounds less than its predecessor, and over 70% of the 6th generation's architectural components are unique to the car and are not shared with any current GM product. And with the 6th gen, we have something that has never happened before, and it is in the introduction of a turbo four-cylinder as being an available engine. Look, this thing makes 275 horsepower, which is more horsepower than most of the V8s made in the first generation Camaro, so it is pretty stout. I started this video off to do a brief history of the Chevrolet Camaro. The truth of the matter is, the car has been around for a long time, 50 years and six generations of cars with the massive changes that it has had. The Camaro has gone from a simple pony car to a world-class supercar over those 50 years. Look, it's a great time to be a car guy or a car girl. You can go to a dealership, get a six, 700 horsepower Camaro with a three year, 36,000 mile warranty, drive it off the lot, take it to work with air conditioning and cruise control on Monday through Friday, and hit the track Saturday and Sunday, and do it at speeds and ETs that are quicker than any of the earlier cars ever thought of. If you're a car person, right now is a great time to go out and get one of these cars 
GM is heading headlong into electric vehicles, and who knows what the Camaro will look like in the future. The Camaro was a response, a late response, to GM's Ford Mustang. And with the new Mach-E, or the electric Mustang, you have to look at Chevrolet as a follower. They're probably going to come out with some variant of the Camaro that has electricity involved. So if you like gasoline, and you like V8, you like torque, and you like lots of power and the sound that they make, now is a good time to go get your Camaro. Guys, I appreciate you watching this video, and until next time, keep the hammer down and keep it between the guardrails.